Welcome to the last in a five-part series on new criteria on management and governance. I'm Ron Barone, Managing Director in the Corporate Ratings. On November 13th, we published Management and Governance Credit Factors. You can view it by clicking on the Related Content tab on the upper right of your screen. Today, we are focusing on seven topics under the governance heading of those criteria. And with us is Trevor Pritchard via satellite from our London office. Trevor is an analytic manager for our ratings in the European-based materials and services sectors and on conglomerates. Welcome, Trevor. First of all, what's new here? We've been looking at governance for more than 10 years now. That's right, Ron. We have. Formerly, we considered governance under our analysis of a company's financial risk profile. It was more or less a standalone exercise, not directly connected with management. This new criteria brings management and governance together to a single overall score that will influence our evaluation of a company's business risk profile. Before we peel back the onion on governance, there's a glaring difference about how we look at governance compared to how we look at management, isn't there? Yes. We are allowing for possible scores of positive, neutral and negative for the eight management factors that you've reviewed in the other videos in the series. But for governance, we do not allow for a positive score. And there are really two reasons for that. Firstly, remember that we're looking at the impact of governance on a company's credit quality. We don't see a strong connection between really good governance and a higher likelihood of debt repayment. On the other hand, we definitely do see a connection between poor governance and a higher likelihood of debt default. Secondly, there's considerable debate about what govern good governance really is. This is the domain of consultants and academics. For us, what really counts is the ability to differentiate between governance practices that are weak relative to those that are not. What are the key topics we'll evaluate under governance? Well, there's several altogether. But let me start with the two we think will be capturing most of our attention. These are board effectiveness and entrepreneurial or controlling ownership. The first deals with the independent mindedness of the board and the second focuses on the influence of controlling shareholders. These are really two sides of the same coin. They get at the behaviors of boards, owners and managers. In each case, are they acting in the interests of all stakeholders, including creditors? Trevor, the third area is management culture. How do we go about determining if a company's culture is good or bad? With all these criteria, it's important to remember that our approach is from a credit perspective. We're not making judgments about whether a company is a fun place to work or whether they've got a great staff canteen. We are focusing on elements of culture that can have a detrimental effect on credit. Some red flags are a dominating CEO, incentives with extraordinary emphasis on short-term profits, or unmanaged conflicts of interest. There seems to be some overlap between these categories. Well, that's intentional, Ron. A negative score on any one of these seven factors will limit the overall management and governance score to FAIR, which is the third of our four ranks. Whether a company has one, two, or all seven negatives doesn't have any differential effect. You can think of them as seven different medical tests looking for the same underlying disease. Trevor, what are the other four factors we'll look at? Companies will be assigned negative scores for a high frequency or severity of regulatory, tax, or legal infractions that are outside of industry norms. Another factor is conflicting communications, for example, telling stockholders that you're undertaking aggressive expansion plans whilst telling bondholders that you're growing organically. The sixth factor is on internal controls, and the final governance factor relates to financial reporting and transparency. What is the impact of management and governance score on the credit rating then? We see the score as an adjustment factor to our view of the company's business risk profile. In the majority of cases, we expect the score to confirm what is already baked into the existing rating. But now we can be more explicit. In some cases though, the management and government score could suggest a change to the current rating, especially after comparing it to peers. Well, thank you, Trevor, for helping us wrap up this five-part series on new management and governance criteria. For more information, see the documents at the right of your screen under the Related Content tab. 
Thank you.